Let's get started on section 12 uh, on uh, small sample uh, testing and very similar to what we just did with z-testing, z-score stuff uh, that's called hypothesis testing for large samples. We're going to do this uh, concept and go over it just a little bit. We're only covering just the first part, which is confidence intervals and uh, hypothesis testing. And we won't get into the uh, two means and uh, variance type stuff. <clears throat> so uh, let's take a look at this. I have a lot written out uh, already because it's really just a dialogue. So you can write it out as we go. Uh, <clears throat> and then I will write up the examples. So, <clears throat> section 12, uh, we'll first look at general concepts. It's what's called the student's T distribution, and then small sample inferences uh, for the population. <clears throat> uh, we will go, we'll do uh, these, just these sections, and for some reason that doesn't look right. <clears throat> Let me double check that. And it's, no, that's right. That's all we're going to. So when you get to 10.4, yeah, that's that's all we do. Then that's uh, between two populations. So we'll leave that to large sampling and not the small samples. Same techniques really though. <clears throat> so we're going to see the what's called the student T distribution. <clears throat> and kind of go back a little bit to uh, central limit theorem concepts. Uh, so suppose you have a sample size less than 30 and the population is not distributed normally. Uh, then uh, this test statistic is not normal. It's not normally distributed, as they would say. Uh, so in that case, the Z tables wouldn't work, uh, what we've been using. Uh, uh, for confidence intervals or hypothesis testing. So we use a different probability dis density function that's called the student T distribution. And that's, uh, that was apparently a pen name by someone who, who developed it. Uh, so the, diff the big, I'll just kind of punchline here, the biggest difference that between the Z tables and the uh, student T distribution is student T takes into account the sample size. If you look up the Z tables, there's no N. You ju it's just normally distributed and you know what it is. So for the student T distribution, we will see it uses the sample size. It, it actually uses degrees of freedom. So you just do N minus one. It's really, that's all you do. All right, so we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so we use tables. Uh, there's a way to use Excel, although I'm not going to show you that uh, right now. I will use it to just calculate the mean and standard deviation, uh, but we'll just we'll do the actual calculation for the uh, test statistic. It looks like that, very similar anyway. So our test uh, statistic looks like this. It's the same thing. It's just t. You, you have x bar. Which you cut. Oops, wrong thing. You have x bar, so you calculate the mean minus your uh, assumed, right? Around minus mu mu naught, what what you what you think it is, or what you're testing against, <clears throat> and then you have the sample distribution uh, variance, uh, standard deviation, and then you do over root in. So this this is the same as what we've been using, but the number you look up is the tables. Okay, and then uh, we'll we'll go over that. Okay, also, let's take a look at this curve. This is the student T distribution, and notice you have different, uh, what we call, we'll call degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. So degrees of freedom basically is in minus one. So you take in, and you subtract one, and then you take your sample size, subtract one, and those are your degrees of freedom. It's very uh, mathematically technical of what it is, and it's confusing sometimes, but we're just gonna follow what it says. So degrees of freedom uh, is a sample size minus one. So that's what this is referring to. And you can see when it's small, you get larger tails. 
So you have basically more area on the outsides of the distribution. Uh, when you have n sample size for the normal distribution, for I'm sorry, for the student t probability density function, <clears throat> then and you have the sample size approach infinity, then you do get exactly the normal curve, which would be this one in blue here. And it, it, it could be, you know, kind of different sizes, but, but that's what it would look like. And then the student distribution is flattening out, so you have more chances basically on the ends, which would make sense. It's more, there's more variability on the outsides. We don't know what it's going to be. Uh, so this table, basically, you look up. What does it say? It says <clears throat> are bell-shaped and uh, symmetric about the, the mean zero and it has fatter tails or uh, longer tails is another way to, to describe it <clears throat> okay and hold on let me follow along in my notes <clears throat> all right so degrees of freedom uh in is a sample size so I'll write all this down i'll keep erasing my own work <clears throat> uh we're in is the sample size and we're specifically using this only when n is less than 30. When it's greater than 30, you can just use the z tables. Okay, and this is specifically for one sample t distribution. You can, you can do multiple samples and it gets more complicated. These are the z tables. I picked uh, two different ones just to take a look at. And for some reason, which I frankly don't know why yet, I'll maybe look it up later, uh, they do right-tailed. They sum right-tailed. Remember that Z summed from left to right. Well, the T distribution sums this side. And it's symmetric. So if you look up uh, degrees of freedom, let's say 10, and you want a 0 0.05 probability, then this 1.8, etc., would be the value, it would be your test statistic, just like the Z tables. And so if you have a left side that's the same number, then you, you, you use the same 1.8, that's the probability. I'm sorry, the probability is 0 0.05 on the other side. But this would be negative. So it, again, that's just how they sum it up and use it. And we'll look at an example of that. Here's another table. So that was one of them. I just picked a couple for you to look at. Uh, this one looked a little more pretty. So this is a probability. Uh, none of the books used out, not, or the, when I looked online to get these pictures, none of them used alpha. I, was, I wasn't sure why. I don't know why they didn't use alpha, but, that's, but it's the same probability. So this is, this is probability alpha. Oops. And I don't know why they're using those different values but it is alpha it's the same as before <clears throat> so that star right there right here is really t sub alpha so okay so it's upper tailed testing or probability so as long as you interpret area you know under a curve and that's that's what you'll get so this is a <clears throat> distribution table it's so you what the biggest difference is is you have to use degrees of freedom <clears throat> and normally you only go to 30 right here. This one goes up to, what, 1,000, and then basically they're saying it's essentially the Z distribution after that. Okay, And, and for this level, you're really just going to be saying, I'm going to tell you, use a small sample testing student T test. So you're all good there. <clears throat> okay, let's continue. All right, so now let's zoom back up. So here's the basic assumptions for the test <clears throat> when you apply it. Uh, <clears throat> so random sample, uh, that's the most critical step, as I mentioned really early in the course, that it's uh, you have to use a random sample and make sure it's random, which can be more difficult than, it, than you think, uh, but that's still critical. Um, here's another one that's interesting. Population is normally distributed. Hmm, didn't I just tell you that it may be, what if it's not normally distributed? Well, <clears throat> yeah, but basically this, this it has to be essentially mound shaped. So it, it can't just be skewed, 
right? So it has to be basically mound shape and symmetric. Then you can use these, the statistical test. So it's a little not exact. It's not, it's not the exact pure mathematics type stuff. This is, you have to analyze and evaluate and think about it. So, uh, population normally distributed or approximately normal. Gosh, I keep doing that, huh? It's approximately normal. Uh, they say the wording is the T distribution is robust, meaning it, it won't be a problem if it's not exactly distributedly normal. Okay, and, and frankly, I'll just tell you it's normal. And we use, like, you know, we just want to apply the mechanics of it right now. We're not going to get too much into <clears throat> other details. Okay, let's go and erase the next stuff. Okay, so it's used for, so T just, the T test is, sometimes you'll, they'll just say T test. They won't even, they'll leave off the student thing. Uh, the T test is used for small samples in general <clears throat> compared to the Z score. Uh, so here's the thing. It accounts for more variability in a small sample size. That's essentially what it's, it, what it's doing. That's the key aspect to it. So, as I say down here, uh, <clears throat> so the population is not nor normal, but it's close to normal. So that's really the key. Uh, using the t-test statistic has a less of a probability of type one error rejecting the null when it is true. So <clears throat> there's, it, it accounts for the, the tails as you go out of that it may occur out here for a small sample. That's really the key aspect of it. <clears throat> okay, let's continue. And you should be pausing and writing this down as you go so you remember better. It's not just looking at it. Uh, so we're going to look at population mean. Uh, that's our next uh, goal here. So this can be used for different aspects, uh, standard deviations and all that kind of stuff. So it's very similar to large sample z-score, uh, <clears throat> except we, we need to know n to look up the tables properly. Uh, you kind of need to know n anyway, but that's, you know, we will have that. So we use degrees of freedom. I just say degrees of freedom equals. That may not be exactly how they write it, but that's good enough for the student T. Okay, and so let's let's write the confidence interval out, what that will look like, and the rest of this using the test statistic. So the, the confidence interval will look like this. So you just picture you have, you have a uh, population you sample it, but it's small, like, you know, maybe you can only get 10 of them. Okay, so, um, and I forgot to maybe go over the basic idea, but suppose you can only sample a small number and you can't sample, uh, you, know, uh, you know, more than 30, like you only have certain amount. I think the example they give in the book is like diamonds, like you only, you can't make a bunch of diamonds or fine ones, so you have to use a small sample size. <clears throat> Makes sense. So confidence interval, you'll find X bar and it's plus or minus just like before. And then now you would have put the Z score. Well, now you do T sub alpha over two, whatever you calculate. And then you calculate the standard deviation S divided by the square root of N. Okay, so everything is the same except for that number. And Frank, basically what's going to happen is that number will be larger than the z-score because it, again, it accounts for the tails and the variability. Uh, okay, so that's your confidence interval. And let's look at the small sample hypothesis testing for the mean. So your, your null is just like before, that the mean, actual mean, is equal to <clears throat> whatever you think it is, mu naught. You have the Alton hypothesis, HA. You have mu greater than mu naught or mu is less than mu naught. This is the one-tailed test. Or you have the two-tailed test that mu is not equal to mu naught. 
Calculating the test statistic is the same as above. So we say t is equal to x bar minus, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, same as above. x bar minus mu naught divided by s over root n. <clears throat> okay, and then we figure out that value and we look up uh, tables using degrees of freedom, which is n minus one, and the alpha region. Whether it's it's the half alpha or the on, on for the two tailed or alpha for the left or right tailed. Uh, the rest is very similar looking. I, I wrote. I went ahead and not, I didn't erase this one. Nice pictures and all. Let's go ahead and copy all this down. Rejection region, H naught, same as before when T is less than negative alpha. But if it's negative, you still look up the same positive value, remember, because it's right tailed. It's the same you know, thing. You just, so if it's negative, you're actually looking up the positive case and it's the one, it's the same value. <clears throat> So you're looking to see if it's in here uh, being positive as opposed to over here and being negative. So it's the same uh, situation. Then you have, uh, <clears throat> so this is left and right tailed. This is two tailed where you take your alpha and, and it, you know, you're depending on your alpha, your alphas are going to be the same. Your alphas could be 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, etc. And you see for two-tailed, if it's in either this side or this side, but when you look it up, it's going to be only the positive case because it's summed on the right. And we'll look at one of those examples. Uh, what else? The sample is, is, of course, randomly selected from a normal, normally distributed population or close to it. That's that stuff for you. You use n minus one for your degrees of freedom uh, in the tables and compute uh, what it is. Uh, these are the examples I'll go through. I'll just do some mechanical ones first. Uh, some of that might be for homework and I'll do one or whatever, whatever ones they are and just do help you go through the calculations for those. Then we'll look at this example for confidence interval uh, and I'm just basically just keep going <clears throat> this is homework, uh, so go ahead and work that out. Could end up on a quiz or any of these uh, for your evaluation. And then you post it, of course. <clears throat> okay, so that's uh, that's the gist of it. I know it was pretty quick, but again, very similar concept. This is just for small sample, and the table looks different.